How do you see this shaking out in Europe? Well, you used the word, Brian, before, disastrous. Uh, I think there is no other word for it. Maybe the other one would be, in, we're in the middle of a perfect storm. So obviously this Gazprom decision is again just playing with Germany, playing with Europe, just showing who actually is more here in, in charge of what's going to happen this winter in, in, in Europe and in Germany, particularly with the, uh, the energy problems. I think, you know, the recession is inevitable. The only question is how severe will this recession get? We have first too many problems, supply chain frictions, the war, high energy, high commodity prices. We now have the low water levels. So all of this, in my view, means that we're going to see a contraction of the European economy in the third quarter, fourth quarter, and also in the first quarter of next year. Yeah, we want to be clear. I mean, uh, Gazprom blaming this this mysterious turbine issue. Germany has basically come out and said it's garbage. I mean, they're, they're effectively calling that excuse a lie. You mentioned the water levels. Coal is having trouble getting through because the Rhine and the Danube are so low now, Karsten. Um, what would be the, the, the best case scenario? I mean, storage levels are at 80%. That's good news. But that also assumes that flows of gas continue even with higher storage levels. Uh, what would be the best case scenario for Europe the next six months? Well, lots of rain in the coming days and weeks, and this would yeah. help. The other one is that, um, that we will continue that these national gas reserves are increased. And like you just said, indeed, I think that is the only silver lining that we currently have, that most countries, including the German, uh, the Germany, are ahead of their own schedule. So um, if we were really to see these national reserves being filled by 90, 95 percent, first of November, I think we should get through the winter, at least through January and February, even if there was a complete stop to Russian gas. So that, in my case, is the only best case scenario that I can imagine. This will not take away, don't forget that, this will not take away high energy prices on, on households and consumers. So this consumer recession is inevitable. Even the, uh, the, the entire recession is inevitable. In this best case scenario, it would be a mild recession, probably leaving no harm to the labor market. In a worst case scenario, we would also see the labor market turn around. Yeah, and it's, um, you know, ironically, you're talking about the weather. I mean, literally praying for better than expected weather or more rain now and then a milder winter is the new strategy, which is just simply unbelievable. Um, the euro it broke below a dollar again this morning. I think it's the lowest now it's been in 20 years. It actually broke below. It just wasn't at parity earlier today. Is there a risk, Karsten, of a sovereign debt surprise in a negative way? Somewhere, I mean, I was in Greece in 2009 watching people throw Molotov cocktails at banks, and you just wonder what's possible again. I don't see a sovereign um, European crisis popping up anytime uh, soon. I think the problem here is it's all about politics, because, um, you know, the, the good thing is that inflation is actually helping European government debt, so the de uh, denominator effect, so that, that, that is positive. I also don't see, and that's the political one, I don't see how any European government would currently have an interest in getting a euro crisis on top of this very long list of already downside risks, crises, so Europe will, um, will, will really stick together and they will throw more money at it if necessary. So we will not see a new euro crisis, what we will see in the winter, and don't forget that is also very explosive, we, will, we could see a social crisis. But we will see that uh, the households, the people with low incomes, obviously they will suffer most when they see their energy invoice being yeah. tripling or quadrupling 